Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about Jobless Reincarnation, Episode 3, the episode where Rudy goes outside and meets his friend. Anyway, this episode, I think, I think it's my favorite episode so far. I really enjoyed it. Um, the thing that made it really great for me was the whole situation with Paul. I think that was great. I loved everything about it. I loved what I saw here. I think it was earnest. I think it was lovely. We'll talk about it in detail as we get into it. But overall, for this episode of Jobless Reincarnation, I'm enjoying it. You know, we're still in the slice of life segment, like hardcore slice of life segment. But it's it's pleasant. It's pleasant. It's legitimately pleasant. I'm really happy that I'm not reminded that Rudy is just a really disgusting person on the inside. Like, it's still there. It's kind of. But I'm happy overall with what I'm getting so far. And I'm just really wowed at the execution for the series. It kind of helps that it's also such a pretty series, but very lovely all around. So for this video, it's going to be a top moment style review. We're going to go through the top moments. This, as a quick recap, this was the episode where Rudy went outside. He met, he met Sylph. He taught Sylph how to use magic. He has some character defining moments, one with his father uh, when his father's in the wrong and later on when Rudy's in the wrong. Um, and... And by the end of the episode, we have a lovely little friendship going on with Rudy and the person who he found out was a girl. So here is my top moment breakdown. My first top moment was the panty worship and the parents fooling around. It was just an interesting dichotomy. You have Rudy, like we know he has the underwear from last episode, but you have Rudy treating it like a relic. And then you have his parents doing the much more healthy thing, that being Paul trying to sneak a grab. I thought the parents were really cute. I think the worship is a little bit concerning. It really reminds you of the fact that this is an old man in the child's body. Um, but thankfully, it's not as aggressive as it could have been. Uh, that said, the parents fooling around was actually super cute. I like I, I, I couldn't help but kind of smile at it. Um, I thought it was really neat. Next top moment was Rudy and his dad getting, getting along at the beginning and Rudy knowing to compliment his mom when he said the little thing about like, yeah, I'll find a girl like my mom. I think Rudy is really good at reading the social situation. I think, you know, the episode makes it clear later on when he makes a very overt statement. But this was the line where you knew he was really good at reading the social situation. Like he knew exactly what to say to get his mom happy. I thought it was cute. I enjoyed seeing it for sure. Now, the the star of the show in this one is really Paul. And this moment at the beginning where him and Rudy are getting along was really important because you, to, to take something away, to make it a little bit more sad, you need to be at a high. Um, so I really enjoyed this setup here. This this moment was important for Paul's descent later because without it, you know, it w it's, it's a little bit different when you have a positive turning into a negative as opposed to a negative becoming more negative, right? Uh, next top moment was Paul saying out loud that he wanted to be more of a dad to Rudy. This is a little bit hard uh, when you have a reincarnate, you know, they, they tend to be more mature than you would expect. So I like that he said out loud that he wanted to be more of a dad. Uh, that does set up for the episode a little bit of a goal because we do see the goal kind of satisfied by the end. Yeah, you know, Rudy might be really advanced in certain things, but he is very much lacking in the social game. And you could say that Paul is the master of the social game, at least relatively. So it was neat to have him say out loud at the beginning, hey, I want to be a better dad. And then by the end of the episode, you actually see it. He is taking strides to being a better father for Rudy and that was really cute. Next top moment was Rudy saving Sylph. What I found interesting about this is that this moment is actually Rudy has a history with bullies. Last episode you had Ru Rudy superimposing the trauma from the results of the bullying but here where you had him defending a uh, well Sylph from three other people I'm surprised that he didn't have like the trauma flashback. Now he did not mention that he would piss in his pants in general um afterward i think but it was still interesting that they didn't show any kind of trauma like again standing up to bullies is what screwed rudy over the first time it was just kind of interesting that it didn't come out even a little bit of a mention at the beginning again we got the piss his pants line but it was still interesting to see um, that might just be a good statement saying like hey rudy actually has made more strides other than just going outside also here we had the shotokan comments because, you know, you have to have Rudy throw in that Japanese perspective. Moving on, Rudy checks Sylph for the superb crystal. I thought this was a smart move. This just reminds you, like, hey, Roxy's warning is important. This girl has green hair. That's really concerning. Um, I like that we already have a little bit of a callback towards that whole danger with the superbs, even though they're not really showing up in the series just yet. Next top moment, Sylph wants to learn magic too. And there, there was a little bit of an elf 
ear wiggle in there. I thought that was really cute. Um, so the reason this was a top moment is just because, well, she just wants to do it. I think I would have liked having a little bit more insight into the girl's character as to why she wanted to learn the magic. But, you know, for now, you can just say, well, she wants to learn magic because, like, the magic is legitimately super cool. And also, like, oh, my God, you know, like, it, it, this is the guy that saved you from the bullies. Um, you want to learn how to protect yourself from bullies, too. Uh, but that was a really cute little thing. Like, you're a kid. If you had the opportunity to, le to learn magic, of course, you would want to do it. Um, I would have enjoyed more just to color the perspective. But otherwise, I think it was good and it ultimately led to the rest of the episode. After that, we go into my favorite moment of the episode, really. It's the whole fallout from Rudy punching a kid. Hands down, favorite moment, and coupled with the rest of Paul's moments, it makes for my favorite episode. So going into this whole situation, like we have to like really break this down. I fully understand what Paul was going through here. The reality is kids can be really tricky. Kids get really good at playing the system if they're smart, and Rudy's a smart kid. Now, from Paul's perspective, just breaking that down, you know, him going, him being angry and like smacking Rudy ahead of time with, before actually knowing the situation, pretty rough. It sucks when that happens. I'm not going to blame him because this is just, he's a new parent. This is kind of what happens. Was the smack on the face uncalled for? Yes. But from his perspective, Rudy ruined a guy, another guy's face and Rudy, Rudy is also a high level magic. Um, this is a super stressful situation. And so when you have Rudy then coming in and calling out Paul, it was super aggressive, but Paul also had it coming, right? Ideally, in the ideal world, I would like more kids to be like Rudy, that being kids that are actually able to properly defend themselves against their parents when their parents are having an oversight and judgment. It would be nice if more kids were like Rudy, but like Rudy says, his skills at arguing come from like decades of experience trying to get out of unwinnable situations. In other words, you really only have a kid like Rudy if you have a kid with experience, which is like, and that by itself is the antithesis to being a kid. A kid doesn't have experience. Um, and that's what I ultimately come out feeling here. Paul's perspective makes sense given how little information parents have when they have to act on what they're seeing in front of them. Like Paul's first indication isn't going to be this kid had his friends punch him in the eye so that his own kid would be in trouble. That's psychopathic. No one would. Well, the first indication would not be, oh, a kid would think to do that. A kid would be that diabolical. Um, when you're faced with all that, it does become a little bit intense. Mind you, like the corporal punishment also is appropriate for the fantasy setting. Um, that makes sense given the standards of the time. Uh, but, of course, what we're looking at here is Paul's failure. Now, when you look at the situation, what makes this moment great is Paul's attempt to become better. See, I'm never going to blame a parent for trying to become better because at the end of the day, parents make mistakes. They're just people still learning new situations. Parents aren't meant to be perfect. They're probably not going to be perfect unless you just get really blessed with the particular parent. A parent who had the most well-adjusted life that taught them everything they needed to know about life. Yeah, not many are that kind of parent. What matters for parents who do make the mistakes, however, it's the parent that tries to do better by their kid after they know they make a mistake, right? Those kind of parents are much more plentiful in the world and those are the kind of parents that need to be supported because they're the ones that are actually trying. And Paul ultimately goes through and tries now that moment does happen a little bit later when paul and uh rudy are together before that moment we have a pretty big one where paul mentions how he left home and then he wonders if that's how his father felt but most likely there was a situation in the past where paul's father got mad at paul and likely paul left because he felt like he was being um, unfairly judged much in the same way that rudy was here so I do like how because of this situation, he thinks back to his father. This is consistent with the idea that you really don't understand what your parent is going through until you're in a similar situation as a parent. Um, people tend to start appreciating their parents much more when they see the struggles that their parent most likely had to go through. This is just a natural part of human identification. Uh, humans get better at, at connecting to issues when they personally experience a variation of it. Now, there's a few more uh, top moments, but I do want to just go through into Paul's redemption, just skip ahead a little bit. When Paul is there with Rudy and he's having his little moment telling Rudy like, hey, you know, 
you could have done like you had to you, you messed up on this one i really enjoyed it because paul takes the time to think okay i'm going to take this calmly i'm going to listen to his side of the story that's great that foundation can only really exist because of the first initial screw up i'm not going to say that paul should have been the ideal parent from the beginning the man's a, a country bumpkin he's a knight in the countryside i don't expect him to have social development that's just not the thing he's an adventurer nah it's not gonna happen what matters is that after he made the mistake he is doing better he takes the time to listen to rudy he takes the time to tell rudy like hey you could have done better he's not mad at rudy he instead wants rudy to do better and so when you have that moment there and you have him actually getting the moment to be a, a father and actually teach rudy something it's really wonderful and i loved how for that whole segment where rudy was in the wrong and you know taking a bath with his dad he didn't narrate, which is really good because the narrator himself, the inner Rudy, doesn't know how to handle the situation either. There is something that he can still legitimately learn here. So it was super endearing. Paul got to have what he wanted. He got to have a good moment of being a father. And it ultimately comes together for his own little character arc within the episode. Again, really appreciated it. I love to see the progression here. I thought this was really lovely overall as a story. Now, going back in time into the rest of the episode, uh, my next top moment was the issue with the mana capacity. Um, now, Rudy points out that this thing that the book said is incorrect. Uh, Roxy didn't make a big deal out of it. So Roxy might be aware of how this actually works. What's most likely going on, and this is just from looking at how other isekais do it, it's just probably when you're a kid, your, your mana capacity can still grow. It's most likely a thing like how kids are really good at picking up language. They might just be really good at expanding their mana capacity. Like, heck, if it was me, I like just going off the assumptions, I would say maybe until puberty. Until puberty is over, maybe the kids still don't have their limits set. Because that would make sense, right? Puberty is a really aggressive time period. And it's a, it's a time period that's all about growth and acclimating to your body. I would say that maybe up to puberty their mana capacities can still grow much like muscle building it except like you know muscle can still build even when you're past puberty uh, my next top moment was sylph learning silent casting i thought this was super cute just going off the rest i think sylph could probably learn it because she still hasn't been solidified with concepts about magic if you don't know any if you don't know what people assume the limits are you have no reason to believe those are the limits, right? So she can just go through it. She still has the mentality of a child. She has more imagination. She can do the silent casting. I thought that was really cool. And then my next top moment is the bath scene, which caused all of the rest for um, Paul. Now, the reason I like the bath scene is just because uh, how you could see the problem that was coming. The moment you saw Sylph's underwear, you could see like, oh, no, Rudy is stepping in it. But Rudy, as a kid... And legitimately, with the social skills of a kid, doesn't know what he's doing. Um, that was just a good scene because you knew it was coming. I, I think it was nicely done. And I especially love the thunder when Rudy realized that he was hanging out with a girl the whole time. That he just screwed up royally. Um, but I do like that after that he was sad. He wasn't shocked. He wasn't giving himself a high five. He was just like, shit, I really screwed up. And that just talks to how Rudy at his base was a good person it's just like the bad bullying and the horrible habits made him into a real degenerate afterward and finally my last top moment is coach Paul him telling Rudy like hey be vulnerable in front of the girl that'll help um now still the guy's a bit of a womanizer he points it out in the uh, in the episode I I think it's good to show vulnerability uh, but let's hope Rudy doesn't take the worst kind of habits away from this. Um, but that said, when you have that final hug there at the end of the episode, I thought it was super cute. I really enjoyed it. Overall, you know, the star of the episode for me is Paul and then Rudy when he's having his vulnerable moment. Because we need to see more of the vulnerability. We don't want to see snot-nosed, um, slight superiority complex, maybe, depending on how you view it, Rudy. You know, I want to see less of the narration and more of actual vulnerability, right? And that's what the episode brings in. You have vulnerability from the parent and you have vulnerability from Rudy. Again, at, in, in an ideal world, I would like more kids to be as aware of their mechanisms to defend themselves as Rudy is. But, you know, you also have to remember, Rudy developed that skill set specifically to subvert his parents in his original life. 
it's not a good skill set to have because if you get a kid that's too clever you'll end up with someone taking advantage of their parents much like rudy did in the past it's a it's a really dicey thing overall right it really only works in a situation where the parent is actually trying to do their best but is uh but made a mistake and also the kid wants to help the parent but you don't usually end up in those kind of situations um where everything aligns like that it, again like the levels of nuance is what i ultimately enjoy about the episode and the levels of earnestness from both parties is what really elevates the matter so guys let me know what you thought down below that was it for uh, mushiko tensei i think a, a great episode really again love it i'm always going to be a defender of parents trying to do better and when you have a situation where the kid's also trying to do better it's like it's just it's just too good it's too good too good to pass up guys let me know what you thought down below and until next time i hope you have an absolutely great day